in or watching. My name is Spencer Alessi, a.k.a. TechSpens, and I am joined by uh, <laughs> Just Casual, <laughs> a.k.a. Sam Han. Yeah. We are uh, just two podcasters, uh, content creators, just trying to uh, talk about things that we're doing and figure out our you know crazy way through this world of esports and video games and content creation and podcasting and we just like to bounce ideas off each other we've been doing it a couple of weeks now and uh it's i think it's helped us both kind of figure out our ideas in our head and kind of get some feedback on what we're thinking so this is just kind of a inside look at some of our conversation and what we're thinking about doing and the things that we are doing and stuff like that so uh sam how you doing man I'm doing swell. Uh, still have my cough a little, <clears throat> but it's a lot, lot better. So hopefully I don't go crazy on this one or anything like that. But yeah, I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Yeah, I hear you. Good, good. I I have that kind of allergy thing, like the post nasal drip, and I'm like, <sighs> okay, like hacking so up stuff. I have that issue. So I feel yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's really annoying. That's the thing that you. That's the thing that keeps me sounding sick forever, even though I feel fine. It's that post nasal drip that just, I don't know, I just can't get over that, but oh well. Yeah, it seems like it's that time of the year, and I actually, <clears throat> I got, I don't know what it's called. I got some sort of allergy medicine, but I haven't been forgetting to take it. So I'm going to try um, that and see if that helps me, but yeah, yeah, it's like the sniffly, the nose. And I don't have like a sore throat or anything, but for me, it's like the post nasal drip and like runny nose or like congested. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just. Mine is just bad enough to be an annoyance and basically keeping me coughing, but whatever. <laughs> what, what can I do about yeah. it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. how yeah. how are things with the podcast going with the esports narrative? So it's going good. It's going good. I uh, like we talked about last time. I made some changes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing one episode per week now. I'm going to put more effort into promoting and creating some more like sub content around it. So I create some more, try and create some more buzz around it and show the people who aren't listening kind of some of the highlights or the cool, awesome, special moments and mm -hmm. interesting moments from each episode um, to hopefully get more people interested in it. If they see, you know, some specific content from it, I'm hopeful that, you know, people will see the value in the podcast and want to just check it out. So I want to create more micro content like Gary V does with his, with his vlog. And, you know, he creates those little videos and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, quotes and stuff like that. Like that's more I, I want to do for my podcast and just create some sub content around that. Sure. Um, so so it, it's, it's going good. How, how much time do you end up spending on an episode then? Because let's say an episode takes an hour, right? So you have an hour of recording or probably an hour and like 20 minutes of recording. And then you have like another probably an hour and a half to edit the thing or maybe an hour. I don't know how long it takes you. And then what else? How how much longer do you spend on that one episode, especially now that you're uh, trying to create a lot more micro content around it? So I was when I was doing three episodes a week, I was spending an hour to record. I was spending about an hour and a half roughly or a little over an hour hour and 20 minutes to edit it and then um so editing it doesn't take me long i don't do a whole lot of editing okay. to it like i pretty much put my intro and cut out some of the noise put my you know my my outro or whatever and yep, yep. put my music on it and then it's good to go so actual editing time is not that long it's like 15 20 minutes oh, that's most good. of it is most of it is doing the show notes so what i like to do is i like to put that's what i'm right. doing now <laughs> what i what i was doing and what i would like to do ultimately is have a full transcription of the podcast oh, and boy. have it all transcribed um so that i can start indexing that content and have it searchable right like that's mm. that's one of the things that's super interesting to me is being able to search your podcast content and if it's all in written out like it's easily indexable and searchable so that's something that's on my radar but it's super not doable right now um, but <laughs> yeah. now that i'm doing now that i'm doing one episode it might be more feasible to, to transcribe it but uh, i'm not going to right now but so it takes about an hour hour and a half for me to go through my episode and pick out the the questions that i asked during the episode 
So I'm doing that and that seems to be taking up less time and it's still valuable because you can still pinpoint, okay, these are the, like the major questions that I ask in the, in, and you can jump right to that if you are curious at that, that part. Yeah. So I do that and um, just create some promo graphics and stuff like that. So all in all, one episode is like an hour to record and then probably two hours to get it all ready to be published. Okay, so then so two hours to one, like one hour to record, two hours to. So how much um, time do you to... think you're going to spend on an episode now since it's going to be one a week? Since again, like you're going to be creating more content around that one episode so i'm sure you're gonna be listening to it to the point of like i'm sick of listening to myself talk this week (laughs) so so yeah so three episodes a week i was essentially doing nine hours plus my like highlight video so like 10 hours a week figure i was doing Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. podcast roughly you know there was still like posting stuff on twitter and you know the posting time and all that but actual like work time like 10 hours let's say so if I'm doing one episode a week and I'm at three hours, mm-hmm. I got seven more hours that I could fill, you know, technically doing promotional stuff. So it's a lot of time for me. Um, I'll probably, probably figure out something that works of, and I don't really think of it like hours wise. Like I'm, sure. I'm, I'm kind of playing it by ear right now to mm-hmm. figure out what works, but I'll probably spend at least, you know, if I spend three hours right now, maybe four, maybe five hours, maybe add on a couple hours of promotion time per week yeah. to try and uh, publish it out there, put it in some Facebook groups or, you know, tweet it out, try and get well-known people to tweet it out or something like that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I think um... so. So what about you? How's, how's things going with Lola and you know, what's, you know, there was some, <laughs> you know, angst last time we talked and yeah, I you kinda... had that, yeah that, how'd that community event go? Uh, let's see. Was that, that was probably the local tournament. Was that last Saturday? Oh my gosh. So when it comes to dates or like what day things were, or like what happened last weekend, this whole year has it's been an absolute blur. <laughs> I have no idea. People like, I'm thinking, Oh, the Lola tournament. That was like three weeks. Oh no, that was last weekend. Oh my gosh. That was last weekend. And it's just, actually, no, it wasn't last weekend. Yeah. No, last weekend was my wife's birthday. So two weekends ago. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, it's all a blur. I I can't believe how just like mush everything is when you're just like working all day long. <laughs> but yeah, it went really well. I was really surprised how smoothly it went. Um, it was fun. I was shout casting for about six hours, which was absolutely exhausting. Um, wow. Yeah, some of the the other hosts were joining me too, so pretty much everyone did like four to six hours. So it was really rough. Um, but again, like I said, it was really fun. The community nice. loved it and they wanted more. I'm like, crap. I was hoping this would be like really bad and we just decide like this isn't for us. Uh... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, so, <clears throat> but I don't know. I The reason why we did this, did the tournament was because someone reached out to me. I don't know if I said this last time, but someone reached out to me and was like, hey, mm-hmm. I want to like help you guys grow i think you guys have a lot of opportunity I'm like okay so what let's see what you got what's a, your pitch and he was like oh you know i think i could like run maybe a, like a <clears throat> like a weekly or monthly league i'm like that sounds like a great idea but that's a lot of work and kind of out of scope of what i'm trying to do so if you can do that without me having to lift a finger like that's awesome right so um obviously i couldn't just not do anything so i was helping him along during the whole process <laughs> but it was still cool sure. because you know i feel really cool that i have a i mean to me it feels big a big platform but at the same time like once i start comparing it's like oh it's tiny but i shouldn't think that way you know i our podcast get like a thousand to seventeen hundred <laughs> downloads a month <clears throat> so it's it's a decent reach you know uh mm-hmm. And as someone that like is really trying to grind into esports and gaming and stuff like that, like I would love to be able to help other people that are that want to do that grind too. So this guy's like, I want to get into esports. I'm like, all right, here, like this is a really easy platform for you to do it. Uh, you could have a lot of impact. Like just kind of put your money where your mouth is, kind of thing, and give the opportunity. And sure. you know that has helped some people. And some people they kind of like tried it and then they weren't really committed or didn't realize how much work it was or you know are still lying to themselves like oh like 
I want to do stuff. And it's like, <laughs> here you go. And they just like kind of want to complain more rather than do. And I've been there, you yeah. know. So it's kind of funny that I can talk on that as, from someone that's been on both sides. And, you know, right now I'm not in a perfect place to be like, oh, I've done it. And like, this is how you do it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, of course. But so, yeah. So basically I let him like, hey, run with it and then try to help him out as much as I can without like really, really taking away from what is necessary to do on the podcast. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but ever since that happened, we haven't really talked about it. So I don't know what that means, but I'm going to kind of just leave it up to him to reach out to me and like see what we can do. Uh, I would love to cool. just collaborate with like someone that organizes these things because one, that's a collaboration. So that's cool. And then they have more resources and then my guy can just like coordinate between i think that would be the best way to right. do it because again i'm not trying to make a league and i'm not trying to organize tournaments because that's just a ton of work that itself is a full-time thing where you need another team of all these people and all these individuals to do stuff and like uh i th- i'm trying to stay focused and narrow to a certain point and uh right. that is just way out of my yeah. lane but it went well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, <laughs> I can uh, I can imagine tournaments being just you know I I talked to a couple people who have tournament experience on my podcast, and one of them was from CSL. He was like a production yep. manager, and he's run the thing soup to nuts, and you know it's it's a lot of a lot of babysitting, probably a lot of uh, you know things going wrong and just frantic <laughs> you know chaos. Yeah, and it was cool because uh, we had a like league podcast tournament like a year and a half ago or almost two years ago. Trinity Forest, that's probably the biggest like amateur League of Legends podcast out there. And they held a tournament and it was a collaborative thing where all the communities came together, which was really cool of them to hold. And because I kind of saw behind the scenes of how that worked as like someone that was trying to help it out, um, it was nice because I'm like, hey, um, these are the issues that we're going to run into. You're going to have 30 people sign up and 15 people are going to show up, <laughs> you know, those kind of things and like what to expect. Right. And I think that helped us out a lot. So that was really cool to see, um, our previous experience just observing that, like actually mattering, just like one experience actually mattering in the sense of like running something a lot, lot smoother. So that was pretty cool. Sweet. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I was, I just wanted to talk to you about and just kind of like get some ideas out yeah. on paper, so to speak, is two things. So we were talking, you and I were talking in DM about, you know, how can we do more content around like plays or highlight moments, or maybe not even, we were talking like maybe not even just the hype moments and like, maybe it's just like what ESPN does or what. I was referencing was golf and masters. What they do is and like create historic content. Like this happened in this year and this is what the storyline was. And you know, this is what happened and that kind of thing. Like historical kind of content. I came mm-hmm. up with that name, esports classic. And along the same lines, I was thinking about why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I started to like actually kind of almost serendipitously, or spontaneously come up with my why of like why I'm doing this is okay. I would like to I would like to to be known as kind of the person that bridges the gap between the gaming ecosystem and the rest of the world, right? I oh, think what okay. podcast well, you and I talked about this a little bit and how podcast is is affecting the world in the way we communicate and the way we consume content. I think podcasts like and I think you were alluding to this to some extent too. Last time we talked was that podcasts have a great, a great chance to affect, you know, the perspective of what people think about video games and esports, competitive mm. video gaming, more so than Twitch can, uh, more so than YouTube can, because Twitch is, while it's good, it's video content. It's people who already know about it who can can. can can already consume the scene. Whereas podcasts, I think we have the opportunity to create content that's maybe um, more evergreen and it's not so specific 
and it uh-huh. and it can be done in a way that's maybe more appealing to a mass audience whereas you have really unique personalities on Twitch like um you know like there's some streamers that are you know pretty profane they swear a lot and they curse a lot <laughs> and that's their thing and and then you have streamers that you know have low cut shirts <laughs> and then you have you know the streamer girls online and then you have like Dr. Disrespect who's like full on entertainer who's super funny um so i was thinking about this like trying to think through this in my head i'm curious your perspective is like i my why of why i'm doing this has changed slightly and it's i think that i want to create the type of content that's going to appeal to not only like the serious gamers and hardcore gamers and hardcore gaming fans but also a wider audience a mass audience to do my part to bring esports to more of a mainstream audience, a mass audience, and bridge the gap between the gaming world and you know the rest of the the world, essentially. Sure. So this, and like, mm-hmm. go ahead. And one thing I was thinking about doing was creating, like, because I'm. I'm not so familiar with say League of Legends, right? Or mm-hmm. even the fighting game community or Rocket League or Counter-Strike. I don't see anyone that has like the ecosystem guide for this esport, right? So, <clears throat> take for example Rocket League. There's a ton of content out for Rocket League. There's a after game show that's kind of very ESPN like and they talk about stuff, but no one has like content for somebody new coming into this the sport and it's like okay this is rocket league this is the tournament structure this is you know the top players the top teams like this is how things are working out these are some of the controversies these are some of the Mm -hmm. uh, things going on and like kind of like break it down and do like a high level game overview of the ecosystem of that particular game yeah absolutely because that's something that i was just looking for was like okay i'm going to be having guests from the rocket league scene on my show I know nothing about Rocket League yet, so I got to find a way to learn about that, <laughs> and I'm going to have to watch hours and hours and hours of content to figure out just a few details, right? So, And then you're going to miss a would... ton of other stuff about it, like you won't get the nuances that everyone else understands, and right. you'll be like, oh, whoops, now I'm, what I wanted to say is yeah. completely null and void. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I totally know what you mean. Um, that's interesting. Because I, I flip flopped a little bit on this, and I'm trying to figure out where I stand on the whole <clears throat> where you market esports to, and also a lot of it probably is based off of like <clears throat> what my goals and what I want to do for communities. Because I really like me personally, I really like grabbing people that are passionate about something, and then just like shoving down their throat and like like how awesome it is and like let's love this even more together and let's contribute more together and let's make this like a community rather than a whole bunch of strangers that like the game and don't talk to each other about the game so for me right a lot of my focus is not targeting people outside of esports it's targeting the people that are really really involved in it um <clears throat> on top of that i think I used to have an opinion like, why are we trying to convince people that like esports is important? Why are we trying to pe- tell people like, no, we are athletes? Why do we why do we have to convince people that gamers are athletes? Right? Like, it's just it's just a mm-hmm. is esport a sport? I was like, I'm so sick of this discussion. It's stupid because it doesn't matter. It's just trying to get validation from people. Now my opinion has changed right. a lot about that because. Um, and it was, it was on, it wasn't until like, I think someone tweeted about it or like, I mentioned like, why are we talking about this? And then someone tweeted, replied. And I was like, Oh, it's like, Hey, when it comes to international people that want to get a visa, like where you categorize yourself in that process is super important because if you're not an athlete, then you can't get a work visa or something because now you're an entertainer and the laws for that are different and therefore they don't work. So suddenly I'm like, Oh, we actually do need to convince people that aren't gamers or that aren't in the industry that we are relevant or it matters. Yeah. So I think what you're doing is actually really smart. The way that I would approach it, (coughs) 
myself is like I'm still targeting gamers, but I'm targeting Dota players to like convert them to League of Legends because it's kind of similar rather than like mm-hmm. I'm targeting the 40-year-old golfer to like watch League of Legends on the weekend. Like that's not what I'm trying to do. But at the same time, like I'm on the fence like what is important for the thing and actually I think I could confidently say that it is important. And some people can focus on that, but not everyone needs to focus on that. Everyone kind of like, that is like your job. You are the person that's supposed, that is your responsibility, right? It might not be everyone's responsibility because some people need to cater towards their own small community or the big community or, you know, themselves. So I kind of went in this like really like weird, like puking my brains out there and like circular logic and all this stuff. But it's something that's really in flux in my head, like, how important is it and what am I supposed to focus on? And, uh, uh yeah, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> where do I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, this, it all got sparked to me because I was talking to Bill Wagner last night on my podcast. Um, he's the guy at Lear- uh, learning bill. I think it was, he's uh-huh. the guy that tweeted, uh, and subtweeted and, wanted to connect you and whatnot, but, Mm -hmm. um, he was super passionate dude. Like he's 40 something years old. He's got kids that are into gaming and stuff like that, but he was never into esports until, you know, several years ago. And he's a 40 year old, you know, guy. Um, and I got to thinking, I'm like, Hmm, why did you get into, you know, gaming? And what he said was, my kids liked gaming. They, they, you know, watched this guy on Twitch and he had this visceral story, right? Like his son really liked this guy on Twitch and he followed him. And then his, it was the first TwitchCon a couple of years ago. And he, he, he was essentially like, you know what, let's go to TwitchCon. And his son met that streamer there at TwitchCon. And it was like, you know, it clicked with him that this is something that his son loved, just like baseball, just like soccer, just like football. It's something that his son enjoyed. And from a parent perspective, you're going to do the things with your son that they enjoy. Like it's the same way. It's the same reason like dads become soccer coaches, right? Even if you know nothing about soccer, yeah, you it's learn to it. spend time with your, yeah, it's spend time with your kid, learn with them and grow with them and, you know, create a bond with them. And that's the same way with gaming, you know, oh, and you that's such a good point. <laughs> that's the awesome that's the awesome part that what bill said last night is missing right like we have these toxic communities Mm -hmm. that is not conducive to the family environment and that's fine you want to do your thing and you know there's tons of toxic toxic content for football and soccer and and everything else but if we want esports as a whole to be more than just an investment playground, you know, these huge like energy Sacramento Kings, like dumping all these celebrities, dumping money into this, like Mm -hmm. the business model around this needs to develop and needs to be, needs to grow. And it's only going to happen with more, uh, with more creative and unique people that are going to come with an outside perspective. Um, and that's going to require people from outside the scene. Um, and, and, and to me, esports is going to be just like NFL, just like just like Major League Soccer. It's going to be just like those things. It might not be the Overwatch League. It might not be League of Legends, but it's mm-hmm. going to be that way. And my why is kind of developing into being that voice of, you know, pioneering the industry and, and bridging the gap and connecting people um, in that way. See, now you're like, you totally got me. <laughs> because yeah it'd be i never thought of it that way i just thought of an older generation that like just is removed from it but then you talk about their kids right and if if they are not able to re- relate to their kids like that sucks especially if the 100%. kids playing 40 hours of games every week instead of you yelling at them to come down for dinner it's you know the yeah like you're gonna be there and you order pizza or something like that instead like that's totally like, cool mm-hmm. like how how now taking apart the physical aspect of it right like football you go outside and you're 
you know, you're burning energy that way and you're physically active, right? Let's take that out of the equation. It, how is going outside and playing catch with your child any different from turning on the PlayStation and playing Call of Duty? Yeah, you, you know, know, there's it's, no different outside of the physical activity. I'll, I'll actually, I'll actually one up that. I think it's actually more beneficial because, uh, for me personally, I think League of Legends means a lot to me because I think of things very like deeply. That's not like a brag or yeah. anything, but like, you know, I play League and I'm thinking like, how do I like game the system? Like, how do I play? everyone else like how do i get my teammates to stop raging and like trick them or like pull some psychological like persuasion or like how do i get this person (laughs) to follow me like how do i bait my teammate to make the decision that i want to make and like or you know i was like what did i learn from that oh my gosh like that applies to my life or so there's a i think that i learned a lot of life's lessons from that one of the big things is just like one of the biggest things i learned is that it's pointless on focusing on other people's actions that you can't control when there's plenty of stuff that you can control of your own actions, right? One thing that a lot of people do yeah, in games, percent. yeah, a lot of a lot of people do this in games that involve other people is they blame their teammates or the system or something like that. And it wasn't until I stopped blaming everyone and every mistake that happened, whether it was across the map or in my lane, like I was like, what could I have done? Oh, I could have been like, oh, that person is getting ganked, so even if even from across the map, I should have told him like, hey, careful, stop pushing because someone's coming to you, right? Or I could have been like, my AD yeah. carry like did something really stupid. Why is that? Oh, you know what? I kind of postured kind of aggressively and that baited my teammate into thinking I was trying to do something I wasn't. So I always focus on what I could do and suddenly I climbed like <clears throat> up half the ra- half the la- ladder. Like it was incredible how much that affected me and then I just started, I really actually applied that a lot into my life. Now, if I'm thinking of, like, the lessons I didn't learn from, like, 5 through 25, like, how cool would it be if I was sitting there with an older figure telling me, like, hey, you have an anger issue, you should control your anger. Or, like, hey, you know, how do you, how can you communicate better? Or, like, how does that make you feel? How do you deal with your emotions? Like, all these things that you can tie into uh, gaming and working with working with other players and working as a team that a lot of people find value in like team sports, traditional sports. <laughs> you know, a lot of people learn mm-hmm. really, really good, valuable things from playing on a basketball team or even golf when it's just like a one person sport where everything's on you and you have to train and put blood, sweat and tears. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like if you're out playing catch, you have a good conversation, but if you're playing league, you can have like, or playing any game together, you can have like life lessons in that and you can talk and all this stuff. And I think that's what's lacking when you talk about like all these light bulbs are going off right now. That's what's lacking when you have all these. I know, right? Yeah. yeah uh, that's what's lacking from all these kids that are playing, that are competing in esports. They drop out of esports and they're completely clueless with no life skills because they didn't have anyone to help them like all these stories are kids that were rejects from their school and reject from like the social norm so they hunkered down by themselves to do things and they were hermits while instead they could have been learning something like being part of a guild like people that were part of guilds learned a lot about responsibility and time management and commitment right um but a lot of people that are playing solo games by themselves, you don't have that. And like, if they had parents that were convinced that esports was legitimate and good, good for their kid rather than a waste of time and a brain sink, uh, that could have changed the whole ecosystem of like player health and mental health. Yeah, and it it's really inspired me to create more content. Um, you know, not just my interview content, like to create more evergreen content about esports and really try and be like a voice and a personality of positivity and good and like good messaging and not the toxic side of it. And I'll tell you another reason. And it's, you know, just a couple words. It's, uh, well, I, it's two words, right? So college, high school. Mm-hmm. So college, esports, is already it's exploding right Mm -hmm. like it's Mm -hmm. just 
it's going to be the norm that kids are getting esports scholarships to play Overwatch or League of Legends or Counter Strike or any other of the major titles. There's going to be there's going to be it's going to be the norm where you're going to meet someone and be like, oh, so what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm a student at you know RIT and like, oh, what is your major? I'm like, oh, I'm a computer science major. I'm like, cool, cool. You, you play any sports or anything? I'm like, yeah, I play in the Overwatch team. And the first time it happens, people are going to be like, what the hell is Overwatch? What like, is an Overwatch? <laughs> <laughs> and like, you don't play like soccer or like baseball or like, you know, do you go outside? And it's like, man, I, I work out. I, I go to the gym and like I play an Overwatch team. And it's going to be so cool to see that be the norm. And it's going to be the same way with high school, right? Because we have high school sports, we have development leagues and everything like that. And, it, and they're already doing it in Connecticut. There's a high school, there's a guy, I forget his name, Tyler something. I got connected to him. I got, I'm going to have him on my show hopefully mm-hmm. soon, but he worked with like the state of Connecticut, like school. I don't know what it was the board. I don't know much about it, but he worked with Connecticut. I think it was, and they got it approved. And then they have like a high school esports scene, like that's approved and like sanctioned and everything like that. Awesome. And they're doing stuff with high school age kids um, in like a developmental league kind of thing for high school. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that is cool. And that's why I think appealing to the masses. Now, if you're the voice much, much the same way, like anyone um, kind of, makes it so to speak is like you just go after what you're passionate about and just you know always just and i think gary v has used this example before and he used like the pokemon example like if you're super passionate about uh, pokemon and you're just like the pokemon 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 and let's say you were the pokemon you know expert for the last 10 years right and this is before pokemon go right this is the example he uses. Like, let's say you're Pokemon everything. You start with a blog and it, it's very small when it starts out. And then you start getting visitors and you grow your audience and maybe you have a podcast and you develop this following and you're the expert at Pokemon. Like everyone goes to you for their Pokemon news or in, information. And then Pokemon Go heads, right? Like imagine being the Pokemon expert when Pokemon Go hits and you know, you, now you're on NBC and CBS and like you're Good on morning, all America. these news <laughs> And it all started because you had a love for freaking Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's, and to some extent, esports is already that way, but you don't see, at least right now, you don't see anyone from esports on CBS or NBC or the major outlets. Like, it's not a huge thing, right? It's yes. right on the brink. Yeah, I mean, every now and then you see someone. I think like um, the esports lawyer, uh, Bryce Bloom or whatever his name is. I can't remember, but he's he's yep. been on a few things. But I think Rick Fox, like you see people trying to, like Rick Fox is actively yeah. trying to. Yeah. Um, Gordon Hay- Hayward, I think, is like a big proponent in the NBA that talks about esports. Yeah. So there are pockets of I'll- it, but it's not a common thing. And it's like, Oh, here's our fluff segment about esports, and like no one's watching right now, and we ask the really like it's, dumb questions that everyone asks. <laughs> you know what? I I equate it a lot to social media in the early 2000s, right? It's like social media. There were people, you know, that like you and I follow. There's people that were like, yeah, this is going to be huge. This is going to change the way that we communicate and engage and you know, consume content. And then there's people that laughed at it. There's people who are like this, what is this Facebook thing? I'll never have a Facebook account. Like, I think that I feel like that's the same way with esports. It's like, there's a lot of people downplaying. There's a lot of people that are like, Oh, it's just people playing video games. It's just nerds playing video games and not doing anything with their life. And, you know, it's going to be one of those things where it surprises everyone when it's just massive. And then there's this huge boom or maybe it's just a huge bust. I don't know, but, yeah, it's yeah. Now, like, I would love to target parents now of gamers. I'm like, this is how you deal with your kid, and this is like convince, like, convince them, like, no, this is not wrong, and this is. Oh, uh, don't add more to my that's plate, why, man. <laughs> that's 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 a good point because that's what I want to do for like these games. It's like, take League of Legends for example. Like, if you were to 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 talk about it 
from like a 40 year old perspective? Like how would you introduce someone to League of Legends that's like your parents' age? Like that's okay, mom, not this easy. Is League of it's not this is, easy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? It's it's really smart. I think that's a that is a small pond, basically, where you can be the big fish. And then suddenly I think that really opens yeah. up doors as you're you are the person that knows how to communicate between these two um, communities. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I think it's a great idea. And it's it's not just like, I'm not thinking one-time content either. Like this is Counter-Strike. This is League of Legends. Like, and then it's like the overview. It's like, okay, maybe you have those pillar pieces that are like, okay, this is Rocket League. This is, you know, maybe it's <clears throat> a, a short video that explains this is the tournament structure. This is how it works. Mm -hmm. Like this is how people get on teams. This is how people get noticed. If your kid is good, this is how they, you know, rank up in the ladder. This is some things that they can do to get noticed or, you Uh, know, that. Yeah. And I think the smart thing about that is like, um, that's a big community that I think would be interested versus like, I'm trying to sell my esports podcast or these like, really in-depth podcast to 14 year olds and they don't care they just want to play they don't care about learning more about the game they just want to grind out have fun laugh with their friends and like beat up noobs and all this kind of stuff like they might not care about that where i feel like working professionals that like they see their kid playing games and they listen to podcasts like eight hours a week and suddenly they're like oh interesting a podcast about something my children are interested in that like I can see the world changing around me and I have no idea what this is. Like, I think that's a perfect demo that yeah. actually would be interested in digesting that content. I mean, um, it, there's a reply all podcast, which I shared with you. They did, what's it reply? Yeah. All? I think it was reply all. They did, a an episode about, um, Justin TV, uh, basically the first like oh, streaming right. service. Yeah. It was a really good episode and they yeah. did, they did good justice in a very, very easily digestible way for people that are familiar with the internet and probably people that aren't familiar with the internet. You know, I'll just go off on one tangent real quick. My Mm -hmm. first exposure to streaming was world of Warcraft. There was a guy streaming a raid, right? And Mm -hmm. he was like, he was, they were clearing out raid bosses or they were, they were coming back from a wipe. Like everyone died against, they were in a boss fight. Everyone died. So everybody had to run back in the day. And there, everybody was running back, and he was sitting there, like playing guitar, like playing <laughs> guitar on stream, and he's just like jamming out, like uh-huh. has super good musician too, like very entertaining, uh-huh. okay. good boys, okay, played guitar, and and then he was like, oh, we, you know, we got to get the boss fight, and he goes, and he pulls up WoW, and he's like, and he's just playing, and that was my first exposure to it, <clears> in, like Justin TV era. I was like, what is this? Like, is this? kind of weird like this guy playing guitar and wow at the same time mm-hmm. actually you know what but, it, uh, it wasn't reply it wasn't reply all it was just i think it was a startup podcast where they talked about companies that failed so like okay i think that's where it, so they it was they were talking to like the ceo about it but anyway gotcha <laughs> go on one thing i was thinking of with uh going back to like the adult kind of demo is i have a lot i've i've been thinking a lot about this lately and one thing that i think would work well too is like you create some sort of conference or retreat once you have some some sort of audience you create these retreats that you can send your kids it's like you know summer camp but it's like oh. esports camp and you have people come in Parent to and child. talk and like <laughs> yeah you have people come oh. in and you know they give talks and they Such talk about idea. life and leadership and <gasps> you know like gary v or chase jarvis tim ferris you know, big name people or like athletes, you know, you bring them in to talk about them and then you have professional, you know, league players come in, they do like a one day, it's all league and you, you know, or you, oh. these are the things I'm thinking about of how to monetize is like not monetizing the content, but monetizing the things that provide actual tactical value that you can monetize like a, like a camp or a retreat or a conference, something like that, that your that parents will pay for, right? Like, parents pay tons of money for their kids to go to football camp Mm -hmm. or to lacrosse camp. Like Mm -hmm. they will pay out the arse for that, for their kids. Yeah. And then now it involves a whole family, not just sending their kids there too. If it's like a, like, you know, like father son camp, 
and they do like outdoor stuff. And then they go like learn about League of Legends or learn about CS:GO. And then the kid, like you said, like you have a you pro like teaching the kids how to play while the parents are listening to like Rick Fox tell them about esports and like the like things that they should worry about or they shouldn't worry about. Like it, it makes a lot of sense. I think you have a really really good idea. I think we make a really really good podcast on this. Get bought out by Twitch. And uh, make become the people that <laughs> on Twitch that make these adventure camps. <laughs> I don't know. Like I think, yeah, I think you're really right about Twitch that. camp. Twitch camp. That's what some people do. Honestly, like when people are are brainstorming business ideas, they think, okay, who do I want to buy this idea? And then they create an idea around that. It's like kind of like this. It's like okay, we're going to create these esports camps um, and and. People have done it to some extent, right? But um, you know, as the industry continues to grow, it'll be hopefully more and more in demand. Oh boy! And it's dependent on your network. Like, if you could bring in big names, like people will pay good money to see like the big names, like um, you know, I don't know, like uh, like Rick Faker or like (laughs) or Rick Fox or like Yeah. yeah, exactly. People will pay. Like, uh, could you imagine, like, you are 52 years old, you grew up watching Rick Fox play, and you're going to go to an adventure camp where you get to, like, meet Rick Rick Fox, and you get to bring your kid along and play with, like, how how nerded out or geeked out would that, like, father be or that mother be? Like, that would be... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, I think the so, way yeah. I think the way you do that is just reach out to a high school that's in the area that's doing this. You do like a you have a very small like PTO almost kind of like meeting where you like just give a presentation for free or you even do it at your local library where they like they can hold it. I don't know. You can find a really small group of people and you can start a really small like 30 person camp in a computer lab at the local library. Like you could this totally makes sense. Totally sounds easily scalable too, where you don't need like venture capitalist like funding for to do something like this. And then you do like you have like monthly or weekly sessions of this that are good. And then you're like, I want to scale this nationwide or like statewide and do like a big camp. Like I think when it comes to the business side, the business aspects of this, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I was listening to, I think it was NPR's like how I built this or something like that. And there was a camp. uh, I want to say it was an adult camp. Mm -hmm. I mean, I forget the name of it, but it was some sort of adult camp. And it was like a destination and experience type camp where these adults go to drink and party and have fun and go kayaking and zip lining and all this Mm -hmm, fun mm -hmm. stuff. And they had, they started with like one location and they started really small, just like you were describing. And then they grew and they grew and they grew and now they're nationwide. And, uh, they, in the podcast, they talk about some of the things that they failed with and some of the things they did well and how they kind of did things. And I think that that's an interesting thing. I think the whole band, the summer camp thing is kind of an interesting business model and you can always probably find, people that want to sponsor it or, or advertise it because, oh, yeah. you know, who wouldn't want to, like, I'm thinking this through right now. Like if you have an esports camp, right. Maybe it's a local business that people are in. The, maybe if you pull from a specific area, right. Mm-hmm. Maybe you go to local businesses and they want to, you know, advertise, you know, their business at the camp and maybe you have banners or pan flips. I don't, I don't know. Some, It'll be you know, as easy as more. like, I need 20 computers uh, hey, Acer, I need 20 monitors. Like, would you be able to give me them cheap or would you even be able to give me them for free or for rent or whatever? And I have already, like, this... If you can sell them on your business model and your proposal, every single, like, hardware supplier will be down. Like, to probably give you for free. Because think about it. If you're a 52-year-old guy that, like, doesn't know how to use a computer and you're like, oh, I want, okay, I'm convinced I want my own PC gaming thing. It's like, what are these computers? Oh, they're iBuyPower computers. You buy them, they come pre-built, 
$1,200, $1,500, $2,300. These are the $1,500 machines. But if you wanted to actually play like this game, which you tried out a little bit, you probably want to get a $2,300 machine that'll run it better. And then it's like, all right, I'm sold and my son needs one. Oh, he wants a stream? All right, we'll get the $2,300 for him. I'll get the $1,500. Boom. Like a working parent that has money to yeah. throw on it. Like that's any Logitech, Acer, I, they'll all be down for that. Because the target demographic isn't yeah, a fourteen-year-old anymore; it's a fifty-five-year-old, like professional, like corporate person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Shit. and I think you make a really good <laughs> point. Good. I think you, <laughs> I think you make a really good point of like having it be father-son, right? Or, um, or you know, mother-daughter, or son, you know, some sort of combination of mm-hmm. having the child and the parent there, so mm-hmm. they're learning together. Um, I think that that's really interesting. Right. And then you could always branch out from that, right? Like you could have a kid only one, you could have an adult only one, like yeah. you could figure it out. But like, I think that would be really cool, but I would, I need to create, like, I feel like I need to create the content and the premise around that first by creating <laughs> some of this higher level pillar content. You know what I mean? But I don't know, maybe not. No, all you need to do, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and become an expert in like being able to talk about it and know the scene. Actually, you don't even need to know the scene. You just need to know enough about what you're going to talk about, right? If you're talking about advocating for children, like why games are important to parents, and you're able to give good examples and then you know back it up with some good research and some like good stats and like kind of know like you don't need to be a psychologist, but you just need to know like interview 10 psychologists and learn what they need to like what they can tell you about what you're trying to figure out and um you know you hire a few people like it totally can start off just like a a game camp that's it you just start off as like a game camp for just kids where they're playing minecraft right and as you Mm -hmm. fund that more you hire more people and you talk to parents and see what they're interested in do some little market research like I think this is so easy to grow. Actually, I was talking to some guy at my church. He actually holds like a summer camp where kids come and play games. Like they learn, they learn how to program their own game, like a very simple game. They learn how to do, uh, nice. they learn how to do Minecraft and make their own servers. And it's, he said it actually started out small, like one class, like of how to like program your first game. And then it was like, they had a Minecraft class. They had like a build your own PC class and like play league of legends. class, like, They've actually done this. So Dude, that's perfect. Yeah. You you start off that small. You know what you do? Yeah. You know what you do? Hmm. Depending on the age group, you have a career night. Like one, like <clears throat> no matter how long it is, right? Let's say, let's say it's a, a four day thing. The last night is, or one of the nights or one of the days is a career day where you have local colleges and businesses come in and talk to these kids who are ready to enter the workforce or ready to enter college and maybe they want to be computer science. Maybe they want to be engineers. Maybe they want to, um, maybe they want to create video games. Maybe they want to be a designer. Maybe they want to be a photographer, or videographer, or maybe they don't want to do anything in esports at all. Like they just like playing video games. Like have a career night as part of this too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This. But this is all stemmed from my conversation last night with Bill. Oh, really? And I'm like, I. Yeah, I'm like I and I was thinking about it last night. I like couldn't sleep. I was up like just laying in my bed thinking about this and I'm like okay, I'm I my Twitter bio is esports podcast where I have unique guests on that share their wisdom and like that to me is what I do, but I need to develop and fine tune why I'm doing it. And I need a north star to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I think that I'm not going to be an expert in any one game, nor do I want to be. So I really love Counter-Strike. I really like watching Overwatch. I really like watching Rocket League. You know what I mean? I I really like games in general. I might not be the foremost expert or a pundit in any one of them, but I think the common similarity of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it is going to be that connection between you know, the, a child and a parent and how impactful video games can be if used properly and that kind of thing and developed and fostered and that bridging the gap. Like I talked about is like my why of why I'm doing this. 
I mean, you know what? I actually, now that I think about it, the most like congruent or similar way this is done already is educational gaming. I think that's like an industry that kind of knows how to speak this way and talk to them, except their games are really focused on education rather than like probably bonding with your child as much. Huh. That's interesting. I think there's a model already there that you just have to copy almost (laughs) and then make it native to what you're doing. Hmm. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. Educational gaming. Yeah. In Madison, there's uh, filament games and they, they're a big, big, uh, they're big in the industry when it comes to making educational games for like, they have games that like teach you about how legislation works in Congress for like 12 year olds. Hmm. And or like how to program. Interesting. Like they make very simple games for the classroom for kids to learn, and like that are on the iPad or on a PC, or probably downloadable mm-hmm. on a digital store too, on like Xbox One or something like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh gosh, my mind. Yeah. Now I won't be able to sleep. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so um. I don't want to Anyways, too much time. I think we went longer than we uh, wanted to go on that, but I think we got off on a couple oh, of tangents yeah. there. Um, last <laughs> thing, last thing. So what what are you envisioning for the content that we're trying to collaborate to create? So I'm what I was thinking about <clears throat> last night and yesterday was historical content. So content that will kind of serve the test of time and be like, look what happened this year in you know worlds 2017 or Mm -hmm. look what happened in you know esl iem oakland which is coming out this is what happened in iem oakland 2016 or something and or this is the you know a insane play or this is like a a turning point in this team's career or this is a turning point in this person's professional career or the Mm -hmm. team's career that like the historical kind of espn type uh masters of golf you know the golf tournament masters yeah they that kind of historical type of content that might be insane plays it might be this that or the other thing but that's what i was thinking about i don't know your your feelings on that and then you could we could do exactly what we were doing and use the same model but be a little less constrained of what we do and what we cover because we don't need to be experts. We're just telling, you know, we'll need to We're figure organizing. out some details of that. <laughs> We're compiling and right. organizing. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Uh, oh man. I like the idea. I think it's a lot of work. That's what I'm worried about, which I shouldn't be afraid of a lot of work, but. I have too many, a lot of work things that I want to do. <laughs> this included. Sure. I'm trying to figure. Huh. I mean, yeah, you're right. Like I could, like, for example, I could do that for every single world championship in, in League of Legends. I should probably do it well. Yeah, I actually probably don't need to watch all the games. I just watch a ton of content that talks about it already and then watch a few games to fill in the gaps and probably talk to a few experts about about it and then i have the whole story and then i just compile clips and tell that story Hmm. yeah and that's a good point like the interviews or yeah it depends like if you if you said like okay it's going to be a five minute video or a 10 minute video you know how much how many hours a week would it take to get some sound bites from someone or just get some you know, shoot somebody a question even, and you like, you include that or you read it, you know, they don't even have to have their, you know, you don't even have to, you know, get them on the phone or anything like that. But, um, just thinking of a format would, of how it would work. See, this is a thing. I don't think you can make it into a 10 minute thing. I think I okay. I guess the scope that I'm thinking of is like, if you cover a whole world tournament, you need, like, I think you can do a seat, like, I feel well, like you see, could do like is, three forty minute episodes on like one season. This is, yeah. Uh. Well, it it depends, right? Like if if you want to create original like a Netflix type content, because mm-hmm. because 
here's the way I think of it, right? What the Masters do, does in golf, this is what they do. They have, you know, they've got a – it's a commercial spot. So it might be 30 seconds. It might be like five minutes. Or they might be waiting for somebody to tee off, and there's like – there's a lot of waiting going on. So they cut to these pre-recorded ready-to-go clips. Oh, and they might okay. be – two minutes they might be five minutes they might be seven they might be 15 minutes but they create these pieces of content to fill in the gaps of their show and i think this is my master plan like i'm putting on my crazy master plan hat but you create that content and then you sell it to esl you sell it to dreamhack you sell it to twitch you sell it to um these uh tournaments or these broadcasts that need the filler content um, that maybe they're not creating themselves. Uh, some mm-hmm. of them are like ESL is, is to a certain extent dream hack that they have a, a huge production um, budget, but that's where I'm seeing an opportunity to sell it is going to be being the people that create that kind of content. And then they sell it as the branded content for whatever that tournament is and like you Hmm. literally sell rights to use it see that's the thing i don't think you can sell it because i think they'll be able to produce it better like at a much higher production quality maybe not storytelling if you're able to be really good in storytell because again that's something that anyone that's a videographer that knows how to tell a story like if you have a production team they could be like hey let's go back to our esl archives and find that counter-strike tournament and let's do a five minute piece on these guys I don't think you. Could, I think they can make something quicker and better than sure. an amateur could, and therefore they would just be like, "Hey, look what this guy is doing. Let's do that for us." And then they can make it really quick and easy. So I don't think you can sell like your the co- commercial or the quick spots to companies. However, I think you could have like a. I think you could make it into a sponsored, like completely sponsored content. It's where it's like. Um, mm-hmm. you make it for like a YouTube channel for ESL or, or no, maybe, maybe like a, mm, maybe like a hyper X like, series. I don't know. They still can do that themselves. See, the thing is if, if they can, if they can spend, let's say they buy it, let's say we make some content, right. And we have this deal and they buy it for, let's say 50 grand, right. Mm-hmm. Let's put out a crazy number, 50 grand. They have a lot of overhead. They have a lot of production costs. Do you think that they can create that same content with all their staff and all their overhead, the same content for less than 50 grand and, and, and up to the quality that they would like to have for 50 grand? I'm going to venture and say like maybe you know, they have a full-time designer, a full-time production manager. Like They've got a lot of overhead to be able to do that. Now it is still relatively cheap to do, but because of the personnel and the production and and the quality that they like to produce, maybe it it makes more sense for them to spend 50 K for these people that created this pretty good content Mm -hmm. and pay them and see how that turns out. Um, I, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Sure. Interesting. I don't know. Or, or you just, you know, like you said, you, you get, uh, you, you put it on a YouTube channel and it's like sponsored branded content for Acer or HyperX or whoever else wants to, you know, sponsor that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, like to me, this idea is like, Hey, Acer, I want to make a podcast about this, like this way can you hire me full time to do it or go I, do I go freelance to do that for you like just like all these branded podcasts like Gimlet's creative is making for like eBay and Tinder and now Blue Apron um mm-hmm. where they pick like a topic within the industry and then you entertain your your fans with that topic and then they're like hey I just digested 8 hours of something that was made by Acer that was really entertaining now I feel like I'm gonna buy their monitor when I have to choose a monitor between a, between an Acer and a Asus monitor. I'm gonna pick Acer because I like them. So I think that's how you sell. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, I think it's cool content. It'd be really cool content to create. 
and if and ultimately like yeah. the way you can do it easily as a like as a as a individual is that you just get a big enough following where you can sell ad space for your YouTube channel or podcast and stuff like that. Yeah, you get a big following on YouTube and then you can be demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is that all that drama is just You've crazy. seen the drama you've seen, Holy yeah. moly. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't even know. I don't know what to think about it. It's it's really scary. But whatever. <sighs> okay, should we end this thing? Yeah. All right, cool. Um Yeah, I don't know. That's that. <laughs> All right. Um, that's, that's it everybody. Peace. Yeah, see you guys.